Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Rocking. Oh, my God. I screwed it up already. Of your rocker cooking with Betty Crocker. There you go. Um, yes, I'm doing these lives. Yes, I am very nervous before I do this. So I'm going to screw up, right? I'm just going to screw up and it's live. And I got to roll with it. So anyway, welcome to Off Your Rocker Cooking with Betty Rocker. Am I saying it right? <laughs> anyway, I am your host, Michelle Redman. Uh, I'm cooking the entire Betty Crocker 1969 cookbook. So if you're just tuning in today, you can start joining in, just do the dip that we're doing today. These are live, but of course they save and they're for anybody to watch after. Uh, today, for sure, I'm going to be doing the Polynesian trim dip, which is on page 14. And guess what? After that, we only have one, two, three, four, five more dips in the appetizers. And then we move on to that. Can you read that? Is it backwards for you guys? Um, anyway, I'm excited about that, but I apologize. Last week, I didn't do any videos. Life just got a hold of me, and it didn't happen. And this is just something fun I'm doing. It's like I'm not getting paid. It's just a little hobby, something I want to do forever um, to cook all the recipes in this cookbook. I'm um, just doing them live for you guys on YouTube. So maybe somebody can have fun, dress up in some 69 slash 70s clothing. Uh, get some ideas of some simple foods and a simpler time. So I decided to share it with you guys on Facebook. But you can jump right in and um, join with this one today and keep following. Or just I'll label them exactly for the videos of what they are. So you can always go back and find certain recipes very easily that way. Okay, so let's get right in with this Polynesian shrimp dip. I am so excited for this one. It just reminds me, um, like. I've mentioned it before, but I was born in 69, but do I remember 1969? No, I remember my clothes from the 70s, very floral, you know, big sleeves. Uh, I've decided you guys can't even see the bottom, so I'm just going to wear, why am I wearing these clothes? Because it's fun. Actually, this is a shirt that I own, and I thought it looked very hippy 70s, so I'm wearing it today. In most of the videos, you will see me dressing up. Um, this, But this dip is so, like, vintage to me retro I've never done it though so I'm excited yes I get nervous doing something new but that's what life's all about is just trying new things new adventures uh, so if I screw up that's just because I've never done this before and I'm doing a live video so you got to give me a little bit of a break but don't let that stop you from trying something new yourself all right so let's get to this um I do want to mention before I forget Betty Crocker, if you've never gone online and looked at their website, it is so easy to navigate, full of recipes. Um, this one, this they call it the curried Polynesian dip, is actually on the website, and they have a picture of it. Uh, some of the other ones are not, or they've been revised. So that is a classic that, honestly, I've never seen at a party that I can remember, but I've seen it. Like, I've seen it in pictures of that era, or, of course, like, in the cookbooks, you know, so uh, again, it's, it's a, it's a presentation of its time, but I'm trying to bring it back. I'm trying to br bring a little bit of the 70s back into the era of now. Okay. Actually, some of these clothes seem to be styling these days. So wear what you want, but I guess it's coming back. All right. Second thing. Before I start, first I'd like to tell you guys what I'm doing, and then the second is here's what I'm wearing and what are we doing. Um, I do have like six or seven, what I think some of them are actually real vintage, and some of them are just made to be looked vintage. Aprons, so I couldn't, couldn't decide. In fact, I think I want more aprons. Like how many aprons do you think a woman or whoever was cooking had back then? Like how many did they have? I kind of like it to match my outfit. But I think I'm going to go with this one. Here's another funny thing. I never used to wear an apron cooking. Like, I didn't. And I spilled a lot. I'm messy. I don't know. I clean up as I go, but I'm messy. And there's always something on me. So I now just wear aprons when I'm cooking all the time. But I think I'm going to go with this apple one today. I suppose anything would go with the cream-colored shirt. 
What do you guys wear aprons? New ones? Old ones? Do you make aprons? What do you got? What do you like? Okay. So, I got my apron on. Again, I kind of do like the ones that are higher up. So when I spill, and I wouldn't want to spill on my white shirt. I also like the ones that have little pockets or they have like an extra little towel hanging down because it is nice to just be able to like wipe your hands on this rather than, I don't know. I usually always have like a towel or something around, but I don't know. These aprons are the coolest thing. Okay. So again, I'm kind of nervous to do this dip and to do it live in front of you guys. I, I am being bluntly honest. I've never done this before. I have eaten a lot of pineapple. I have cut up a pineapple a bunch of different ways, but I've never scooped one out, which is about to happen. So let's see what happens. And if you guys have tips, I am not a professional <laughs> chef. I'm not a professional cook. Yes, I've done a lot of cooking. I've absolutely done none of these dips that we've done so far. I'm sure I've eaten them. I've just never made them. Um, so if you have tips for me, I would greatly appreciate that as well. And to let me know, how did you guys like it? Did you bring it to a party? Did you just have it for your family? Alrighty. Got me set up a little different today, so it's like a different angle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, what's that? You really only have to see a little bit. There we go. How's that? Sorry. I'm deciding on a phone stand. I'm literally like using my laptop right now to do this. It's complicated for me anyways. Okay, I like that. That's a good setup. Okay, hi. <laughs> I'm wearing sweatpants. Uh, not styling with the sweatpants. Okay, here we go. Cut one inch slices from the top of the pineapple. One inch slice. All right, I'm going to say it every time, I think. You guys don't have to buy a lot of expensive stuff. Go to thrift stores, ask people if they're not using things anymore, go to rummage sales. You can find cute bowls. In fact, with almost all my bowls and some plates I have found just from thrifting, um, something I've just, you know, kind of done my whole life and, you know, I don't like to waste money. But when you do want to spend and invest in something very, very, I think one of the best things you can spend in your kitchen, good night. Get some good knives, get a sharpener. It will like seriously change your life in the kitchen. In my opinion. Good knives and a few cute bowls. But those again, like, look at this one. I got this in a thrift shop for like 25 cents. It's so cute. I usually cut on a larger cutting board. I am not a fan of small cutting boards, but for the sake of the show, so you can see it, I have it on the small one. So that's my other tip. Okay, I'm gearing up. You can do this. Cut one inch slice from the top of a pineapple, leaving the greens on the top. Ready? Now, right now, if I had a really dull knife, I would really be dreading this, but I know this thing is very sharp. It's going through like butter. All right, I did it. Does anybody else find the top of a pineapple just so fascinating? Look at that. Just the way things grow and all these little circles. Adorable. All right, so there you go. You got the bottom. Cut out and remove the fruit, leaving a one and a half inch wall. Remove core from the fruit and cut remaining uh, pineapple into bite sized pieces. All right, here's where I'm a little nervous. I've never done, like, usually if I was cutting a pineapple, I would do this to get the skin off um, and then get the center out, but here we go. Again, I have a very sharp knife. The other thing I would say to you guys, 
is, you know, when you are using a sharp knife, and especially if you haven't like done a lot of knife work, just really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, you could easily cut yourself, but don't let that stop you. Uh, just tell, you know, yourself, I'm focusing on this project and whatever is happening around you um, just has to happen around you. Okay, I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. How am I going to get the bottom out? <laughs> How am I going to get the bottom out? Seriously. Remove core from the fruit. Okay, I don't, I kind of want to take the bottom off so it's more flat, but I don't think you're supposed to. I'm trying to mimic these recipes, like, totally as if it was, um, it's it, the time, like, I am a lady, and it's 1969, and it's sort of the 70s, and I'm using this cookbook. And not using today's conveniences. I'm also trying to bring that into the show. Hmm. You guys, what do I do? How do I get this out? <laughs> How do I do this? Maybe that's partly why I was nervous to do this last week. I wasn't nervous. I was really busy. But I am nervous. Okay, I need to get a spoon. I really need somebody to tell me how would you have done this differently. <laughs> you know, I could have Googled this before I started. How awesome is that, you guys? That we can look stuff up. Somebody's probably done a video just on how to do this, what I'm doing, and that would be it. That would be the whole video. How to remove fruit from the inside. Oh my gosh, this is a good one. It's pretty easy. Ah! And of course, I could have done this ahead for you guys, but then it's just not real. <laughs> You're seeing it real. Sometimes I'm probably going to have to do some steps ahead on certain recipes just because, you know, it would be like two hours. Seriously, I am so embarrassed. <laughs> All right, I'm really not. Sometimes just got to, I always wash my hands before I start. That's another thing. Um, wow, I don't understand how to do this other than how I'm doing it. <laughs> Just massacring it, massacring it. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> This is bad. This is funny though. Oh my gosh. Okay. Maybe you would just like get two pineapple and use the one to be all like perfectly cut up into cubes. <laughs> because you took the bottom off and the skin. And then just have this for like a smoothie or something. This is okay. I'm just this is okay. This is um, this is good. And you know what? I don't even think I need to go down any further, other than I would want more pineapple because oh, that's way too high. <laughs> that's not gonna work. I was hoping this one would fit in there. That one's not gonna work in there. Um, you know what will work, I think, is the actual sour cream. Whoa, look at that. Wow. That's what I'm going to do. I'm sure I have a bowl that would fit, but I don't want to go digging around for it. So anyway, um, I feel like I want to get that out of there. I am not a person who likes to waste food, so I will do anything to use the whole entire thing. Oh, probably, probably the part of the pineapple. You guys, I live in Wisconsin. We've had like a ton of bugs lately, in particular of mosquitoes. And so there's even like mosquitoes just flying around, I'm sure, in the house. Kind of, kind of got a little under control, but going in and out of the house so much, you know, you're just going to get bugs in. 
I was like, oh my god, I hope that's not a mosquito. Like, it's been crazy. It's been like, I don't know, I've never seen so many in this area anyway in my life. And mosquitoes really like me. Like, have you ever been by someone and they're like, I'm not getting bit at all. And then you're like, you're just getting bit like crazy. I'm usually the one that's getting bit like crazy. All right. I cannot. This is, <laughs> this pineapple, I probably won't have this dip very long. I'm just going to end up getting the whole bottom out at some point and making smoothies. All right. There's my little tip for you. Putting this aside. Uh, this is a clean towel, by the way, so I'm just going to do that. I really need help on this one more than I have on any of the other ones. Okay, this one, this isn't the first or the last. Like, when we get to breads and desserts, I've, I, like, have not baked a lot, so I'm going to be in big trouble. It's all right, though. Doing it anyway. Okay, so let's get these cut a little smaller. Actually, the core should be out too. It's just tougher. It's just tougher. I don't know. I know people that eat it. You could, but. Oops. Let's just pretend these are really nice and square. No, they're totally not. I'll end up like blending all that into my smoothie. I don't even care that it's the center. It's all good. Pretty sure this isn't going to be enough pineapple. I wonder what um, your friends or family or anybody, if you brought this, what they would say. I think if they were at any age, they would think, wow, what's that? But definitely somebody who um, would remember the time. Like, you could almost make somebody's whole day bringing this somewhere. I don't know. Maybe this isn't why we don't see this done anymore <laughs> for the example that I just showed you. Okay, so now I have these... Um, as best as I could from massacring it, taking it out into little bite-sized pieces of pineapple. Um, and then, okay. Um, actually, I'm gonna make the dip next because it's just so easy. So here's what it is. It's one cup of sour cream and three-fourths teaspoons curry powder and a half a teaspoon salt. So, oh my God, my hands are sticky. So the eight ounces is a cup. So I thought, actually, I'm really glad this is working out where this fits in there because I don't know. I'm the one in the house that does all the dishes, which is my absolutely, I love the cooking and prepping and stuff, but I really do just basically despise doing dishes. So anytime I have a shortcut where I don't have to do the dishes is a win for me. So using this container to mix it, also using in here is a like a double or triple score in my world. Anybody else? You know, it's like I want to make things, but I don't want all these dishes. But what are you gonna do? There's no make it make the uh, dip fairy in this house. <laughs> There's no fairy. Okay, so here's the curry powder. You can get curry powder almost anywhere these days. Of course. Typically, I do not like doing powder over something because what if half the things spilled in there? And trust me, it can. In fact, this is really getting close to doing that. I'm kind of living on the edge today. All right. Does anybody else just love the smell of curry? I just love it. I love a lot of Indian food, and there's a lot of curry in it. And it does not mean that it's spicy. It's just the flavoring. But if you've never tried it, like, you have to try it. It's so good. Even just sprinkle a little bit on, like, on your eggs. 
So good. Don't know until you try. There. All right. I've mentioned it before, but I just don't like measuring stuff. That's where I'm really going to be in trouble when we get to the baking. The only downside to this is I prefer having a bigger bowl to like stir because I think you can just get it all together better, but whatever. I'm making it happen right in here. Just take your time. But keep folding it to the middle, it'll eventually get there. I'm like, how freaking simple is this dip? Like, it's two things. It might have even been okay with all the salt, but again, I'm trying to make these like to the tea. And then I can always tweak the recipe after that. Like if I want to make it another time. Like the doubled ham one. That dip was so good. I also love the um, strong horse uh, horseradish flavor. If you love horseradish, you will love the dried beef dip. It was so good. Okay, so this, that's just gonna go in there. Even if it's not time to do it. It's in there. That's so cute. Oh my gosh, you guys. It could be just that I got lucky on this sized pineapple, but that, little container fits in there like it was construction constructed like this panel this pineapple grew just for this it knew it just knew someday it was going to be a little uh dip display it just knew it okay so the next thing oh so my my shrimp you guys was frozen and here's just a really quick tip like if you're um, shrimp is frozen. This is already cooked. You could buy it raw. If you're doing this, make sure you buy it already cooked because otherwise you have to cook this. Um, and I always pick up shrimp when it's on sale because, you know, I just use it in so many different things. So, but I, it was still frozen. Um, this one, these do have the tail on. You can buy them. They're a little bit more with the tail off, but sometimes they're just on sale. So just look around, but they're very easy to defrost. Like I've only had this in the water, maybe a few seconds before I started this and I have cool water on them you know covering them and they're already ready I took a couple of the tails off before because I don't know it just seems to happen quickly but if you just grab it right here and pull see it just comes right off you could cut them too but I found that just this little I'll do another one. just hold it right here and just okay but then it doesn't want to work Okay, 9 out of 10, it'll work. That one got a little bit of the meat left in the tail. And I'm out. <laughs> All right. So you get the idea. Even when you're eating them, you guys, when they're, like, anywhere, that's just a tip. One more. Let's do it one more time. There, that one worked. All right, so the shrimp are ready to go. Again, look for cooked unless you want to cook them. And they don't take long to cook, but I I buy them both ways. But for this recipe, I think just buying them already cooked. Maybe you do want to buy them with the, the tail off. Um, then you're even um, a few steps closer. Toothpicks. Oh, my gosh. Oh, up here. Okay, so this is going to be... Oh, now I have shrimp hands on my toothpicks. I normally would have washed my hands in between. Ugh. Oh, well. So it says, place a pitted ripe grape olive in a curve of each cooked shrimp. All right, so here's how I took this. Like, I was like, all right, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the olive first. Then I got to Actually, and here's why sometimes I just lay one big towel down. I don't know, again, I'm messy and I can wash that easily. Like right now, this is a very clean towel. Some used, used towel. Let's just get some of these guys out. 
I'll probably just do one side of this so you guys get the idea how this is gonna work. One side of this pineapple. Okay, so when it says, place a pitted right olive. So these are pitted. You know, you can get them in all different ways these days. Um, you could pit them to yourself if you have some, you can poke that little pimento out. But I bought them already pitted. I took it like in the curve of the, of each cooked shrimp secure with a pick. You will need about one cup shrimp. Place the pineapple pieces on picks and then you alternate. So it's going to be this. And I took it like, this is how I thought it was supposed to look. Like that. Like inside the shrimp. But if you look on Betty Crocker's um, website, and this is no big deal, you guys. This is like super minor. But they had them um, like a different way. So it's just a whatever. That's the way I take that when I read place the little the, the black olive like in the circle of the shrimp that's how I do it not the opposite way do whatever people will just be happy you brought them something <laughs> right doesn't have to be perfect it's however you want to do it okay so there oh my gosh it's looking cute already here <sighs> I'm really not taking this anywhere, but kind of wish that I was. So you could do, like in here it says, um, it doesn't really give you any direction of like, other than keep going around. I think when I looked on the Betty Crocker website, it was like, do it in a spiral? Like, did they mean around in a circle? It almost looked like there's trail down and then back up, but whatever. Make your own pattern. Make it how you want it. Oh my gosh, it almost looks like a, it, it almost looks like a, like a frog with its mouth open. <laughs> oh, yes. I think kids would love doing this. Like, I've mentioned it before, when my kids were little, I had them in the kitchen a lot. And for two huge reasons, I needed the help. And I knew if they helped, they would try it. And it worked. And, um. I'm really glad I did that because they both they both know how to cook. Of course, um, we didn't do a lot of dips, but mostly did you know the dinners, your regular foods that you eat. Not a lot of party stuff, but. I really think kids would love doing this. Look, if they could totally do this part. So that's what you're doing. You're just going around and around. So on the website, on the Betty Cracker website, I'm talking about like the old version. Everything's the same. But it looked like they were like this. So just a different way. See what maybe I'll do something like that down here. Nah, I like it all the same. Okay, so that is oops, I didn't mean to like that. So I think you're just alternating like a checkered board, like shrimp, olive, pineapple, shrimp, olive, palm, and then under here it's the pineapple, and then black olive with the shrimp and then that goes around i don't i can't really poke up here because this won't fit in there so really it doesn't end up being a ton of stuff like on there i'm probably going to have plenty now that i think about it like that's plenty of pieces i was worried about getting the bottom stuff out which i moved over here and i will use that like i'm seriously going to use that in my smoothies i'll put a little container and it'll be frozen and then tomorrow i'll have that but um it said uh how many did it? it was a cup of shrimp so yeah i would say a cup of, cup of shrimp is gonna end up going all the way around and then i don't know like i have way too many black olives i was just a little leftover from a can that i opened the other day like i didn't need that many for that recipe so i had a lot left i won't even need about 
So I suppose what somebody could do is like, let's say you had a party. Let's pretend this is finished. And then you're going to dip, you know, these are going in there. Probably more this would be the thing to do with the dip. Does anybody know? I'm, th I'm guessing this, but you can dip anything in there. And then let's say it's like, oh, everybody ate it. I think if you had a couple of like these all prepped up, like in your refrigerator some somewhere, you could take that pineapple back quick and reset it up. Like that's what I would do. I bet you could get two more rounds of all the way around, considering I suppose it would depend on the size of your pineapple, but I don't think they vary that much. And that way you're getting more out of it. Um, and then that's it. So let's say I went all the way around. It then says place the custard cup of the curry dip in there. It already is. This is going to be on top. Look at that. Look at that. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, there it is. And the last thing you need to do, you don't, don't necessarily serve it right away because you let this set, is like taking saran wrap which i love and hate i have a love hate relationship with saran wrap because like sometimes it just gets all over the place it's to me but when it works it's great you're going to saran wrap this whole thing don't know if you would need to saran wrap this you know i think that'd be a waste but you know saran wrap it pack to saran wrap the whole damn thing saran wrap the whole damn thing and whatever whatever you decide to do because it says Place custard cup. Okay, so that's already in there. Cover the pineapple top. Cover the with the pineapple top to refrigerate it before serving. Cover completely with a plastic wrap. So I'm reading this literally. Like I'm thinking I'm supposed to put this right back on and saran wrap this whole thing. And that's it. That's it. Doesn't even say that I have to let it sit very long. So maybe you could just like immediately dig into that a lot of these dips it's like at least an hour i always think things taste better like the more hours you can give it that's why usually like something like this for sure i would do a day ahead and again i would have whatever remaining pineapple and shrimp i would get like two more rounds enough so once this was gone that i could go and bring it in the kitchen quickly and make another round like more and then one more or i could have this all like on pick sitting out, but I think it's cute when it's all together. What do you guys think? Do you think it's cute when it's all together? But those are just some ideas you can do for a party. Um, but ways that you could serve it. If anybody has suggestions on anything that you just saw today, um, you know, I don't mind any kind of, you know, things you would have done or ideas. Have you ever made this? Do you make, um, are there different variations of dip that would be good with that? Like, that is a very simple one, but I imagine, I don't know. It's just, it's going to be a weird combination to try. I'll let you guys know the next time what I thought about it. Otherwise, I don't think today I'm going to be doing the next two, but before the end of the week, my goal is to get the guacamole. Sorry, the bulk over. There's more than just a few I'm going to mention. Um. The guacamole done, the lobster fondue dip, those for sure. But then I'm really going to try to chuck through the last three, which is the Santa Fe dip, hot clam dip, and a hot bacon bean dip. And then we're still in the appetizers, but the dips are behind us. Um, and we move on to the canapes, canapes, uh, C-A-N-A-P-E-S. I've never made these. They look adorable. I do love making cutout cookies. So when I say I don't bake, that's where any kind of baking experience I have. And yes, I made a few loaves of bread, but um, yeah, not many. I don't think I've ever made a pie. There's many, many desserts I've never made. And I know measuring is important. So I am going to have to really, really, really focus on that. But I just think these little, like even moving to the next page, these are so adorable. So adorable. And if you're looking for um, a really cute Halloween idea uh, on the Betty Crocker website, they have like, I didn't find any of these on their website, but they had updated ones like, you know, probably things that people like these days. And they had the cutest little, like if you have any kind of a black cat, you know, it looks like the, the, the cat's angry. Um, 
in fact, this is just a little fitness, like totally off track here, but, um, you know, it's called the angry cat or the cat stretch. You know why? Cause you, because when a cat's angry, it like arches up like that. That's why it's named that. Who knew that? <laughs> a little bit of fun fact for you. Um, but they had, so that would be the classic, like Halloween cat would be angry cat, you know, and then the tail is up. You guys just check it out. They're so cute. So you'd cut the little bread with those, uh, like I had like rye bread, you know, some dark breads. And, and then it was like a, it was a black olive, I believe dip that you would serve with it. So anyway, I think kids would find that super fun too. Um, just thought they were adorable. And then they had other ones too, but we will be doing the ones from the book. Doesn't hurt to, to look at those updated new ones. I've been keeping myself busy with this cookbook. Um, but ever since I started this, I have been looking at the Betty Crocker website a little bit more and using some of those recipes in my slow cooker. So that's it for today. I look forward to uh, seeing you guys next time and have a great day. Bye-bye.